Uh, as people told, we are going to talk about ECMAScript and we are going through the journey from the idea to the language. So first of the things I already told, but uh, hello everyone, all the folks at uh, the, um, the streaming, uh, I want to say thank you for being here. And let's start the journey from the zero, stage zero or phase zero. And as I already introduced, I'm Romla, I'm Rick Degalia, we are a company that the open source software consultancy. We focus on the browser implementation, engines, standards. So uh, I guess you, you heard from us or from projects we are working with. So uh, step one, stage one, phase one, what standard body or body of standards and what's TC39? Well, before we start, standards are really needed. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember, that's a big issue that happened a time ago with the hamburger, where the cheese should go or should have cheese or not. Well, if we use a standards body or a, a avenue that help us unify and standardize how the recipe of hamburger should be made, all of these never happen because you follow the spec, you follow the rules, and you write your own implementation of the hamburger icon or emoji of the hamburger. So just to summarize, a body of standard or standard body, um, as you probably know, what WG, W3C, ISO, ECMA are just places or avenues where you unify and do uniformization. It's the place where you have some doubt or any doubt you, you have about something, about the recipe of hamburger or about how number format is implemented. You go to that standard and you just read the recipe that normally is in form of spec uh, or report or, or, or paper. And you just follow all the steps there and you can have uh, implementation or a recipe as it should be or the canonical version of it of course you always can vary or can uh, do different but the unif the, the the main recipe is there about tc39 lots of people think that tc39 is like this the guardians of the javascript uh, the people that is behind the language and they are trying to fight against all the world to make the language um a, a standard but no they are just few folks that are trying to make the best for all the people um, watching at home this stream uh, use the language in the best way they can to, with the best performance and uh, giving the best experience for them to work and build um, beautiful applications. And um, the group behind this we call TC39, the technical committee that works on the definition of the language. The, the ECMAScript or JavaScript, as we all call. And before going much further, I'm doing a kind of a glossary uh, for the terminology we are going to use today. I guess you understood at the beginning that uh, a standard avenue or a standards body uh, would be, in this case, ECMA. That is the place where we are hosting a uh, specification with the number ECMA262 that casually is the name of the language that he kind of describes that we all uh, call JavaScript. And the group of work, TC39, but could be TC55, 45, depending on the specification that you are running as a technical committee, it's the people that are working towards specifying and defining the new features and trying to fix things um, on the language. So um, we are at phase two, stage two, um, how TC39 works. We already know what is uh, ECMA, that is the host of the TC39, that is the technical committee that works on our loved JavaScript, ECMAScript, and now how it works. Well, this works um, how every house works on consensus-based decisions. The group tries to decide on the future of the language based on objections, based on feedback, and trying to move forward always with the consensus of every peer on the group. 
this group is composed by diverse people that we have implementers that normally are the ones that uh, are behind of the engines could be uh, people from V8, people from other engines, people from engine 262, or any other that you can imagine. We have the predictioners they call that are people like you, like me, that use JavaScript every day to build new functionalities. We have community experts. We have members from um, organizations, universities, um, and uh, companies that wants to contribute for the good of the language. Normally, the steps are uh, based on stage, is why I reinforce every time I move from slide, the slides, uh, stage zero or phase zero, uh, stage two, stage three. Well, we have plus one plus four stages. We start on stage zero and we end on stage four. And all these steps are to travel from the idea to the language. So let's do this travel all together. When these kind of things happen, well, when we work, uh, we normally have uh, between four to eight plenary meetings all the year. Some of them are in person, some of them are online. And we try to always work between all those sessions, having several meetings, having TG2 that is focused on internationalization, TG4, that is new working groups focused on source maps. Everybody interested on in participating on those groups, either it's editors outreach or educators and tools calls, just ping me or I will give the links at the end because all of you can participate, give feedback to, to, to the language and help build the language we work with every day. We know how it works. We know with, with parts are the composition of DC39. So let's try to um, iterate over the stages uh, towards the creation of a new feature in the language. Imagine that we, are, we, we have an idea of where to put the cheese on the hamburger. Well, we have to pass through different stages. The first stage is the zero stage that is the straw person stage. That is when you have an idea. Well, I have an idea that a hamburger should have cheese and the cheese should go there. Well, I try to reach out to some people that belongs to the committee, people that are experienced on, on, on the JavaScript world and just trying to get some feedback ideas and build an explainer or a store person proposal that I can just try to get to stage one. And here is a list of lots of proposals that are still on stage zero, mostly because they didn't get to stage one, but doesn't mean they are um, not um, not proposals that in future could reach out to, to to the stage four. But at the moment, they still on stage zero, and some of these proposals still being an inspiration for future proposals because people is not the right time for for that proposal to go ahead perhaps in two, three years, there is some things on the current language that blocks the evolution of some of these proposals. But yeah, there are lots of ideas here. I will share the slides at the end. You can see all the links there as well. And when we have the stage zero, we need to go stage one. Yeah, we have the idea. And when you end the stage one, or when you go to stage one in this case, this means that, uh, when you call stage one and people say yeah or don't say nothing and you have consensus uh, this means that you are devoting some time uh, as a champion of that the proposal to make this proposal a reality you have some rough ideas of what you want to do you have some ideas in your head and um, some of them are, has some demos or polyfills but we expect to have major changes here and as an example of this kind of proposals one of the proposals and kind of aligned from what we spoke you know people were speaking before about about typescript well type annotations proposal that also i'm one of the champions well type annotations proposal just want to bring the space for everybody use types uh, the language we love so this kind of code nowadays um, throws an error when you run on the browser or when you have a type checker like TypeScript, Flow, Eagle, or others, this and this code just 
kind of give you this type error because uh, as you probably know, string and number are different. What we want with this proposal? Well, we want this proposal, when you run this code on the browser, the browser just understand this code as a comment and not as a something that should be runnable or should throw. So when you have on your execution, um, local execution, you have a type checker connected, you can just use as you use nowadays any other um, flow, TypeScript, etc. So you have typed code on your local and you can just show that same code at your browser and it will run. Um, the idea is to make easier the process between you write your code using any type checker to the browser, avoiding this compilation step. Uh, anyway, you can always do as you do minification, you just can strip this, these type annotations and um, they don't exist. But nowadays you, you are not able to do it. So this is one proposal that wants to bring this space of the types to the language without having any cost, uh, any runtime cost. Another interesting proposal on the stage one, and I'm bringing proposals that I really like. I'm, I, this doesn't mean that tomorrow or in 10 years or in five years, they will become part of the standard, but they are just ideas that I feel that are really, really great. And I just took the, the freedom to bring them here. Well, pattern matching. Well, will someone talk about Python and talk about other language or Rust or whatever? Well, imagine that our switch that we are used to, it's on steroids. And you can do lots of more things with switch that we are doing nowadays. Imagine that you can just use your fetch call and you have a pattern matching that you can match more than a string that we are using on, on switch. And you have spread, you, you have functions, you have uh, function expressions, you have lots of uh, utilities here that you can use to uh, pattern matching and to, 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 to make your code even more um, prettier uh, without having like a hundred lines trying to, to, to get probably the same result as you have here. This is a fantastic proposal, but as I'm saying, it's stage one. This part of the initial design of the proposal, there are lots of thoughts about it. Um, and as a community, as a people that wants to also help and give feedback, feedback is always important. Sometimes uh, we have to evaluate the cost of learning all these new things on the language that also could be a burden for the end user. The complexity uh, of implementation in some proposals, I'm not talking directly from this one, but these are the things that people have in consideration when they um, vote to move stage the proposal. And sometimes when you have a proposal that is bigger or more complex, um, to some of the advice people give is strip it into different parts. And so we can kind of have three or four small proposals that can evolve independently. And at the end, when it lands on the language, also gives more learning time for the people in the community to kind of um, gradually um, absorb uh, the, 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 the new things on the language instead of having a huge big thing into, into it that probably will also difficult the evolution and learning process. But anyway, this is a side topic that I, <laughs> I don't want to sidetrack on this. Well, go to stage two, let's move to stage two. Uh, in this case, when you go stage two or um, you already uh, have um, or you navigate through stage two, you already have a formal spec. So um, th this could be already something that is it's becoming a reality. You have all the semantics and the APIs covered. Um, it's not complete at all, but it's already in a good shape and probably will look like um, the future of final proposal, but still ahead, waiting for feedback from you, from people on the, the committee, and um, this uh, starting getting serious. So things are uh, are having the spec as here. This is an example of the spec. The spec it's simply kind of a recipe um, using um, the format that. Uh, that um, ECMA uses, and in this case, we use a TC39 for writing the spec, and just a recipe of 
each step um, you have to do to create your hamburger with the cheese in the middle or on top of the hamburger. So this is one of the parts that you are already start working when you are at this stage. One of the proposals also I really like on this stage, stage two, is the fairing module evaluation from my colleague Nicolo and Yulia. And this is something that uh, will bring the power of uh, you already have on your hands of dynamic import, but it's not dynamic import. It's everything as you already know. You do the resolution, the, resol the resolving the, the, the dependency, you fetch and compile the code, uh, you attach the context, you link all the bindings and dependency tree, but you skip the step of evaluating that code. Then sometimes causes the burden and um, the CPU usage initialization that you don't want to have in your in your application. This is a different way to solve um, the, the the startup performance because sometimes when you dynamically import, you have the cost of network, but sometimes you don't. Uh, care about this cost of network as the initialization process and uh, and the cost of network is not is not a problem and you already have the code there if the code is there he will be evaluated and executed in, independently so in this case we are trying to avoid this evaluation so the code is there ready to be executed but is a kind of a dormant status so um application it's fully prepared but you avoid that initialization cost of the module you are loading at the beginning. This could be something really interesting, interesting for lots of different use cases and lots of different architectures because sometimes you have to, to, to change the way you write your code to accommodate these kind of peculiarities. Um, so this proposal will kind of cover uh, another step on the the performance improvements and, and how we can kind of write uh, more performant applications based on loading and based on trying to get the code when you really need it or evaluated the code when we really need it when you get to stage three well um when you navigate this stage you have uh, a spec almost complete or even complete as changes on this stage are likely not to be uh, done, uh, sometimes happens. You already have reviewers that might sign off the, 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 the spec. The test uh, starts uh, on the stage three. You, have, you need to have all the stat, tests that makes your spec compliant. Some browser or some engine start implementing the proposal. They have the proposal behind the flag. So it's kind of, well, it's almost there if it's not this year, mm, let's probably it's next one or it's it's something that will likely to happen with no lots of changes. So um, I can start dreaming about it. So one of the proposals we 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 I will present uh, in a while. But before, just to give you some heads up on some of the things that you can also um, see at the internet. I I was mentioning about the test, the coverage. Well, you have the test 262 project on GitHub. That is a project from TC39. That is the project that um, holds the test harness that runs against the implementations and tests the completeness uh, against the specs. So you see the test 262 um, for FY um, website where you can more graphically understand the level of implementation and level of coverage from the, the engines or the libraries that implement the spec, because we talk about engines, V8, Spider Monkey, JavaScript Core, but there are lots of other um, engines or libraries that also implements the specification um, we call JavaScript or ECMAScript on their own runtime. So this is really interesting. Also, ba Babel. Uh, that I think almost everybody uses on on the on, as a practitioner to to also fulfill some of the features when you are not using TypeScript or, or others. Stage three proposals I really like. Well, um, Intel duration format from my also one of my colleagues Uzval is the champion gives you the ability to calculate durations using the Intel API. Sometimes people don't, don't look much on the Intel API because I think it's the 
least well-known part of the, the JavaScript, but there are lots of functionalities that you can rely on the Intel API. In this case, the calculation of durations. And this is amazing because nowadays, on the past, doing this kind of calculation requires more libraries, lots of code, and um, this is all internationalized. So this also saves lots of um, file, size file and, and different, uh, and the need of loading property files and language files, etc. So on the duration, uh, duration format API, you just can write in French, English, Spanish, and you have your duration formatted as it is here on the slide. Another proposal that I really enjoy and really like, uh, and it's one of the biggest proposals on the language, is Temporal. Temporal, it's kind of a um, replacement for all the libraries you used to use, like Moment.js or DataFNS, where uh, they were amazing, but um, we should have this feature that language, and Temporal bring these features that language, these brings the capability of calculating dates, of having time zones, of do all the arithmetics that we were used to do with Moment.js yes, when we need to calculate all um, and to, to manipulate dates with the, the benefit that um, it's all internationalized, not extra cost uh, on library size, and it's part of the language. So this is one of the most amazing proposals that uh, that uh, I'm, I'm aware of and I'm really excited and hope um, this lands really soon uh, in all the browsers. And when we talk about the proposals and talk about ECMAScript, we have all these stages, yeah, with zero, one, two, three. And when we finally got to the stage four, means that on the stage three, we have all the tests, the spec it's uh, finished, and no more touches and we are ready to say well win and for um for having that flag um you, you have to browsers need to start implementing at least one or two implementations should, should be available and pass all the acceptance tests um this uh, when you got to stage four the cons and the next year your proposal will be part of the main spec, so these will be merged on the ECMA 262 spec, so will be definitely part of the language, and in future when an engine or someone wants to implement a full implementation of uh, ECMA 262, they, sh they should um, implement your proposal as well, because it's already part of the, 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 the language. And every every browser or every engine should be shipping it. So it's kind of a end phase. And uh, when the proposal finished, that is the stage four. And an example of a proposal stage four uh, from also my colleagues from Bloomberg, also uh, sponsor us in lots of uh, proposals we work for is change array by copy. It's a very simple proposal, but it's a proposal that brings um, a, a, a new array, changing it by copying it and giving all these utility methods that you can reverse the, the array or sort or, sp or splice or uh, even with width uh, replace the, 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 the index by the number you want in this case. Um, like you see here, it's, it's something that it's a utility, a small proposal, but also gives us uh, a, a lots of new things and, and, and all these methods and, and new functionalities that sometimes we think are small are things that help the daily practitioner or daily user of the language, avoiding them to use libraries, as you know, Lodash, et cetera, that I really love, I, I also use, but if you already have on the language, it's even more easier. There is a list of things that um, proposals and other parts, um, proposals already finished that I really enjoy and I really like that are, some of them are more recent, some of them are older, but you just, by searching on the Google or any uh, search engine, TC39 finished proposals, you will be able to see all the proposals that were finished from the past, uh, since the beginning. Uh, and uh, 
and see the news that are happening. And um, as a stage four, also um, sometimes, or most of you are already using uh, TypeScript or Babel, um, so you are not in a risk of um, just running your code in, into the browser and it doesn't work because implementation is not done because uh, TypeScript, Babel, and others that also are polyfilling, polyfilling or kind of uh, trying to, to fill the gap between the implementation and the, 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 the browser uh, availability of the APIs, um, you can use some of the new um, the new things on the language before they are officially released. This is so cool. And nowadays you can really use because most of things don't change as much as they change in the past or just wait for the next year uh, to things be included on the language and uh, be part of the new versions of the browsers. And as a stage four, uh, because it's really important to get all involved, uh, it's easy. You don't have to be a delegate. You don't have to be a, 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 a invited expert. You can just start by writing some test to six to tests, refining some of the proposals, writing documentation. I start by writing some documentation, writing tests. I start same way here, giving feedback on GitHub. I leave you here a gist of um, some links I I I'm I have on 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 a list for you to get on board and, and to learn a little bit more how to become part of the this community because we are welcoming you and as the last but not least just want to thank you also you can find here a, a small um, um a few questions about this presentation and slides here and i just welcome and want to say thank you for uh everyone all right. Uh, obrigado. Uh, I, uh, learned, I learned Portuguese too a little bit. Uh, I was in Portugal, so <laughs> that's good. <laughs> uh, hey, Romulo, uh, is that a dinosaur in the middle of that QR code? Yeah, yeah. It's it's the, the, chrome, the chrome dinosaur. Dinosaur. Hey, uh, well, dinosaur. Uh, yeah. We have some questions to go over with you, but first, a question we're asking everybody. It's really interesting to ask you because you're not just in the business of being great at using JavaScript or in the business of making JavaScript. What advice would you give to young folks who are just starting their career in programming? Well, um, I think the, the, the most, uh, one of the things they, they should do is uh, try to belong to a community, try to engage with open source, try to learn uh, new libraries, but instead of just using, try to dig into the source code, um, answer questions on GitHub uh, issues. By, by doing that, I think they will become even more experts on that library, but also part of the community. And this community is very, very small because possibly you will be speaking here one day, uh, <laughs> myself, and, and, and know most of the people in the community and ask around, um, and give you the opportunity to find a new job, to find a, a career advice or wherever. Just invest on open source, independently if you are working on open source or not. Perhaps you are already using an open source library anyway. Yeah. And file some discussion on the proposals, like you said at the end, right? That That's, you are, everybody's welcome uh, to, to, All right. to, to. I'll turn this back. over to Khaled for audience questions. Yeah, let's. Uh, this is a good segue to a question Vinny has asked. Uh, what are some of the official tools used by the TC39? Uh, did you folks write everything in Markdown? Like which project tools, meeting tools? Uh, we saw we saw your calendar. So um, yeah, well, um, now for meetings, well, we use uh, some for 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 calendar. You already saw, but normally we use open source. We used to use open source tools for meetings like Jitsi. <laughs> now we we change for um, Zoom, I guess, from last meetings, but was a recent change. And um, for writing the spec, we have um, we uh, let me just say ECMA. We have kind of a formal language to writing the spec. So if you want to start writing specs, you can MX. Let let me try to bring the 
the link here so you can learn a little bit um, for how to write the spec here yeah? that there is a kind of for a specific format to write the language where we have a linter and you, you can use it for for like um, write the language and there is a funny project uh, a really good one from a university that called es meta mm -hmm. that that parses the the spec and kind of outputs code so um for learning how spec because sometimes spec is really hard and difficult to understand and uh, to kind of materialize what is going on written there to code uh, sometimes i had to kind of write my own code to kind of see if the steps are are the, the proper ones when you're writing tests so yes Matt also it gives you this um this um this kind of really good uh, way of learning while doing the job but I don't recall many tools. Test 262, it's the test harness um, that mm -hmm. we use as a test of the spec, not test the core of the implementation, but test if the output of the engine implementation follows all the steps of we have described on the spec. And mm -hmm. that's on top of my head, I don't recall anything else. Well, I, th I think you, uh, we kind of saw it too in kind of the temporal spec uh, as well. It's like, Yes, tools are important, but there obviously is a lot of people involved to kind of help you through the process of writing these specifications, right? You're not just kind of thrown out there by yourself hoping to like get this right the first time, right? Well, you, you write by example most of the times until you, you learn <laughs> how the things work. Um, and uh, huge proposals like temporal, it's kind of gradual uh, steps and, and, and involves lots of time, uh, years um, to get uh, the final shape of, of a spec. Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of brings me up to like an interesting question. You kept using the word years, right? Like on average, how how often or like how long does it take to go from an idea that's stage one or was it stage? Did you start at stage zero or stage one? Normally stage one. I, I mentioned stage zero because normally when you don't go through stage one, you, your proposal is still there, like in our archive okay. stage zero, and you can mm -hmm. always bring back to stage one again. Yep. So from like stage one to final spec is finished and the spec is out there for uh, browser vendors to kind of implement, like how long can people expect that process to go? Well, I have two answers. One is the most honest one and one is the the, <laughs> the political. Uh, no, um, I'm not giving uh, either. Uh, well, it depends. Uh, it's the, the right uh, word uh, be, mm -hmm. because um, a small um, kind of addition of the language that is kind of, it's really obvious. Oh, um, like uh, the dot at, uh, oh, this is really obvious. We need this. It is a very small thing. Can go through the language in less than one year or one year, let's say, because every mm -hmm. year uh, it's 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 an, a new edition of the ECMAScript. So it can be out in, in one year because we have eight planners a year, six to eight. You can get just go stage one or directly and go stage by stage in, in, in each uh, plenary. If the proposal is just simple and something that it's quite obvious that should be there. Mm -hmm. If it's something more complex that uh, like type annotations uh, that people, uh, we have lots of good and feedback, different kinds of feedback and also committee. Sometimes it, people are very apprehensive because it's an important step for the language. So let's do it. What right can take years. Decorated is taking years or uh, temporal is taking lots of years, but we want to be sure that when it goes uh, out of the, the 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 door, it's something that will last uh, forever. Let's say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm actually friends with Matt and Maggie, and like, uh, don't get them started on dates and times because <laughs> <laughs> they they can talk forever. They're they're yeah. the smartest people when it comes to that kind of subject matter. So. Uh, yeah, it's definitely one of those things you want to get right before it kind of goes out the door. Um, you know, an, an interesting thing that kind of watching, especially uh, with those array um, helpers, like uh, how much how much are these kind of proposals inspired by other tech ecosystems and other languages? Because 
you, I can see hints of, from my perspective, like C sharp kind of making its way into the JavaScript world. Well, um, sometimes uh, I think it was a, a, um, a famous um, word on the biology that uh, things are not uh, new, they are transformers. So I'm not sure how to say in English, but uh, majority of, of, of the things on the language or in different languages are just a copy of something that work really well in other language. If work really well in Python or in Rust or why not bring it to the JavaScript world as well? Mm -hmm. So, or work really well as a library, why not bring to the to to, to the standards as well? So, some lots of new functionalities are kind of driven by by this um, vision of copying. Uh, copying is not the right word because inspired, kind of, but <laughs> inspired, yeah, inspired by by things that work well on different languages. So. Why not bring in here and bring to to the users that love this language a new thing that they can even do better uh, applications? Yeah, that that's the idea. And yeah, if you have any, just let me know. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because I asked some people in the chat, and uh, Marvin, the paranoid Android, uh, suggested he'd like operator. Oh, over don't, things, so. don't talk about operator. <laughs> <laughs> Because I yeah. think I, I, I'm not from that time, but I've been heard about operator overloading since since long time. And we have kind of a division between uh, mm. uh, people on, on the committee on operator overloading. But uh, yeah, <laughs> perhaps we can try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hopefully Marvin, the paranoid Android can kind of get involved. Uh, I think that was your call to action at the end of your presentation. So yeah. It's fantastic, fantastic talk. So, Paul, I'm going to throw it back to you. And uh, yeah, uh, Romulo, thank you so much for joining us today. And I will say just the same thing I said on the way in. A couple of my colleagues were at uh, conferences in Porto a couple of weeks ago, and I was so jealous. So, I'll get <laughs> wow. there as soon as I can, and hopefully meet up with you for a coffee or something. Thank you, thank oh. you for today. Perfect. See you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.